And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodesh. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Um, this uh, this is a video, all right, from the brother Yashalom, his um, YouTube handler, GMS Watchman. All right, subscribe and be edified. And um, I'm gonna play real quick going into uh, more information on the German detention centers, all right, but more specifically um, for people who break um, uh, quarantine, you know, basically, if you uh, if they catch you breaking quarantine, um, according to them, Germans you who get, repeat uh, you basically get, uh, you get a warning, and then the second time you get a fine, and if you, you know, are still breaking it after that, they're going to now put you in a uh, uh, concentration camp. That's basically what it is. So I'm going to play this real quick and you can hear it and then we'll get a couple of precepts because this is uh, becoming commonplace in reality. And best believe it's not going to be only Germany that's doing this. You know why? Because it's not only Germany that's facing this problem. And the world is going to look at Germany and say, well, it looks like they found a solution. So we might as well start, you know, incorporating that as well. And so that proposed New York bill, which sounds basically the same as this, guess what? Now that can come off the shelves. But let's play this. Germans who repeatedly refuse to quarantine after being exposed to COVID-19 will be held in detention centers and even under police guard, according to reports. Officials in the state of Saxony, which is experiencing one of the worst outbreaks in the European nation, have already approved plans to hold quarantine breakers in a fenced-off section of a refugee camp, the Telegraph said. Another state, Brandenburg, also plans to use a section of a refugee camp. In Schleswig-Holstein, repeat offenders will be kept in a special area in a juvenile detention center, the report said, citing Germany's Wealth newspaper. The state of Baden-Württemberg has two hospitals with rooms to hold the scofflaws, which will be guarded by police, the report said. The centers are aimed at detaining only those who continue to break lockdown even after being fined, the report said. States have been granted powers to do so under the Disease Protection Act, an emergency law that was passed by the German Bundestag last March and renewed in November, Dr. Christoph Degenhardt, an expert in administrative law, told Die Welt. Joanna Kotar, a member of the Populist Alternative for Germany Party, tweeted that those involved in the centers had been reading too much Orwell. As of Monday, Germany has seen more than 2 million confirmed cases of coronavirus and nearly 47,000 deaths, according to Johns Hopkins University. All right. <clears throat> so as you can see, they're basically telling you everything right there putting some nice music in the background so it doesn't sound all ominous, right? But this is your reality, all right? Because <laughs> as you can hear, now, the um, they said in the in the commercial or in the video that um, this is only going to be for repeated uh, quarantine offenders. But we all know that's how it starts. The same way they said the lockdown is only going to be for two weeks. You see where we're at now, right? This is just a, a way to introduce um, these camps and make it a, a norm to where people, they show you that in um, a lot of different clips. There's a, when you watch the movie Children of Men, there's a scene where you actually have people in, uh, caged up, okay? Now, for whatever reason, hey, they, they, were, they were deemed um, a menace to society. So now you're starting to see how this whole pandemic has given them, there's a reason they're not letting it go. It has given them the perfect opportunity to create emergency laws, allowing them to do things they couldn't normally do when society was functioning the way it was pre-pandemic. Because 
We told you that they had concentration camps. We told you they were going to start uh, declare martial law and they were going to take away your freedoms. They were going to take you out your houses. But now the question was, OK, how they're not just going to come and do that. There's there's a cause. They need to have a justification for doing it. And then voila, a year ago, boom. And now here you are seeing what do they call it, that um, uh, Disease Protection Act. All right. Disease Protection Act, which I'm going to look into that as well. But due to this whole pandemic, they now have uh, a justification to, you know, give the police power to just come into your house and remove you or fine you for walking with somebody that's not of the same household as you are. You know, think about these things. Now, if somebody told you this was going to be life, all right, uh, uh, if two years ago or three years ago, somebody told you that this was what normal life was going to look like. All right. In a few years, you would call them, which we did tell you that, actually, but you would call them what you called us conspiracy theorists. You know, oh, you guys are crazy. You guys are bugging. But we're not bugging anymore, are we? You know, you're starting to see that this is becoming reality right before your eyes. And there's nothing you can do about it. OK, now I'm going to start off with this uh, precept here. This is the book of Galatians, chapter six, verse seven. Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Sometimes people mistake the Lord's long suffering, all right, and think that he's not going to do anything at all. You know, they say, well, you've been saying this for years, nothing happened. When you said it, I made funny when I laughed because it was just a joke and nothing happened. But now you're seeing what we're telling you come to pass before your face. And the Most High is not mocked because... You may think you're laughing at us. You may think we sound stupid. You may think that we're just crazy and we got a few screws loose. But it's not our words. This is not our program. This is not our agenda. We're doing the work of the Heavenly Father. This is the Lord's message. This is his warning. Ezekiel 3 and 17. We're giving you warning because the Lord sent us out here. So when you mock us and you try to make fun of us, it thinking that you're getting at us, you're really getting at, you're really mocking the Lord. And as we just read here, the Most High is not mocked. And whatever you sowed, a lot of you sowed to the flesh, and you're going to reap corruption. Because when you had yet liberty, pursuant to uh, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, when you had yet liberty, you despised it. When you had liberty to repent, you despised it. And you loathed the Lord's laws. And that's why you made fun of us and you said, oh, this, that, and the third. But now what are you going to do? Okay? Because you're not going to stop this. This is the most highest program. You know? And these detention camps, and, and it's funny how it's in Germany, right? The same place, you know, you read about the whole Holocaust situation, right? With the Jews and the you know, concentration camps and this, that, and the third in Germany, right? And now you're doing the modern day version of uh, quarantine breakers. And New York, the, the New York bill is proposing to take it a step further. Anybody that they suspect who's a carrier or they feel, you know, you, you might have been exposed or whatever, you could be in your house and they'll come in there. All right. As it tells you in the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, let's actually get that real quick. They will come into your house. They will kick down your door. And when they pass these legislations, forget about asking them for a warrant. All right. They're going to have permission all right, under certain emergency laws, you may say the Constitution is the Constitution that they're going to tell you, look, right now, these are emergency laws because of the situation or the pandemic we're in. And they kick down your doors and they do this. All right. Second Ezra, chapter uh, 16, starting at verse 770. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. All right. Now. That's not going to be just men of the Lord or people who believe. They're coming for everybody. All right. Verse 71, they shall be like madmen sparing none. So whether you're a child or you're a grown up or you're sickly or you're pregnant or whatever you are, they're not going to spare any, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Verse 72, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. In order for somebody to cast you out of your house, they got to come. If I'm outside of your house, how can I cast you outside your house? I need to come in there 
grab your ass up, and bring you out your house. But let's look up the word cast. Maybe it'll give us a... All right. Look at that. Well, this is the definition we're looking for. It says, an act of throwing something forcefully. He grabbed a spear for uh, for a third cast. All right? So, they shall cast you out of your houses. Obviously, these definitions don't fit the context in which the word cast is being used. So, we know that it's referring on to the last definition, an act of throwing something forcefully. Okay? So, they're not going to come in there, and that's why it says they're going to be like madmen. They're not going to come in there and, hey, let me rub you on the back and walk you out slowly. They're going to cast you out of your house. Now, what does that mean? If they have to throw you out your house, all right, that means that you're going to have people that are going to resist. Because nobody's going to be in their house and it, you have troops or police just kick down your door and you're just ready to go. You got your hands out. Here you go. Handcuff me and let me walk out. No. People are going to question, what are you doing? What's going on? Why are you in my house? Why are you telling me I have to leave? What happened? What did I do? And as you're doing that, they're going to take that as a form of resistance. And they're not going to come to explain anything to you. They're just going to grab your ass up unless, according to the law or whatever they pass, they have to tell you something before. Then they'll say it quickly. And then they're going to grab you and throw you out your house. And you're going to go with them. And you're going to end up in one of these bad boys. All right? Them detention, them detention centers. And, well, notice they didn't really tell you how long you're going to be in there, did you? I mean, did they? They just said that they're going to put people in here, okay? So, they could have you in there indefinitely. They could have you in there, and if you refuse to get the treatment they want to give you, then they can execute you, you know? Hey, it's all through a gradual process. All right, now, when you go in there, well... They may say, well, yeah, you, your family can come and visit you, this, that, and the third, but only for how long before they switch that up? So like it says, and cast them out of their houses. And when they cast you out your house, well, you can't go back into your house. There's a reason they're casting you out of your house, because they're saying that you're a menace to society or you're contagious. So they can't just leave you out in the street. What's the point in a cop coming to your house to throw you out your house to say, all right, now go, go roam somewhere else? No. They're going to cast you out your house because they're going to take you somewhere. All right. And as I just played the video, they're going to take you to a nice concentration camp. All right. And I'm being sarcastic with the nice because it's not it's going to be anything but nice. All right. They're not taking you to a five star hotel to do your nails and give you a manicure and all of that. No. OK. They're taking you over there. All right. To work your ass. When you um, I was actually playing uh, uh, The Last of Us yesterday. And in the beginning, there was an outbreak. You know, they mentioned how the vaccines weren't working. Um, um, they declared martial law. And they had food rations. Now, when you play the game in the beginning, the story, all right, the main character, as he's walking, there's a scene where you have um, um, agents in hazmat suits. And they go into this house. They grab a people. They bring them out. And they throw them down onto their knees. Okay, they throw them onto their knees and then they're taking, I believe they were taking their temperature or something like that. But they were scanning, I believe, the back of their neck. All right. And the first two passed. The third, the third person was sick. So they shot um they uh they 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 injected them with something which killed them, all right, or almost like a lethal injection. And the fourth guy was so scared he got up and tried to resist. And they shot his ass on the spot. <clears throat> so when they cast you out your house. They might cast you out, check your temperature or check something. And if you're sick, they may kill you there. And if you're not, they may take you to a concentration camp. But this is going to be reality for people. All right. And you're going to get hit with that fresh dose of reality and it's not going to be a nice thing. OK. Food rations, labor camps. All right. Families being split up. Hmm. So it says, um. Verse 73, then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. So in that time, the Lord is going to deliver us. All right, you're going to know who his chosen are because he's going to deliver them. But also, people are going to know, pursuant to Ezekiel 33 and 33, when they're going through these things, they're going to know, oh, the men of the Lord warned us of these things. Those people we thought were crazy. They warned us of these things. All right, what they were saying was correct. Okay, 
So, going back, now I'm going to go to uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. Actually, let's finish off in Galatians. Galatians 6, verse 8, it says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And you have a lot of people that sow to the flesh because they don't want to uh, 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 endure, all right, the work of the Spirit. Even though it's not, it's not hard. They don't. They, they, they're too, you know, into the world. It's too much for them. So they, they, they sow to the flesh. They sow to what's pleasures, you know, what's pleasurable to them in the moment. They don't consider the spiritual investment that we're making. All right. So in doing that, they might, they might stop doing the work. You know, they might come against you because it's funny or you know whatever the case may be. But they're not thinking spiritually. You know what's going to happen to them. They're going to reap corruption, all right, through the judgments that's going to hit them. Ver, uh, continuing, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So we know that even in all this, all right, the Lord is going to have us, man. He's going to keep us. He's going to protect us. Verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Because think about it like this. You work, you're working for somebody, right? And you're working, you know, for their company, whatever job you do. If you get hurt while on the job, they're now accountable. All right. So their job is to make sure that you're safe when you're working in, in on their premise. And so the Lord is going to make sure that we're safe because we're working for him. It's as simple as that. But for people who turn down the job, if something happens, you can't come to the to the, the to the workplace and say uh, uh can you can you help me out why why should they all right so now this is the book of ezekiel matter of fact i'll actually read hosea then we'll read ezekiel this is a uh, hosea 5 and 15 i will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face all right now as of right now only the elect all right are acknowledging our offenses all right you know, I say that, Lord willing, uh, I'm a part of the elect, and Lord willing, you sincere brothers and sisters out there are also part of the elect. But only the elect are acknowledging their offense and seeking the Lord. It says, in their affliction, they shall seek me early. All right. And the elect, all right, are seeking the Lord while he may be found. But you're going to have those that are going to say, oh, no, 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 I, I want to continue to. The reason certain people don't seek the Lord is because they love the world too much. But when the Lord takes away everything they love, then they then they have to sober up, and then they see the world for what it truly is. Then they want to run back and, like it says, in their affliction they shall seek me early. But by the time you come back, the Lord ain't gonna be He ain't gonna be there for you. So now what? Then you try to come to us. Oh, yo, bro, what, bro? Ain't no bro, nothing. You know, you made your decision, you made your choice. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> All right. It doesn't work that way. You make a choice and you stick by it. That's as simple as that. So if you sow to the flesh, you're going to of the flesh reap corruption. And if we sow to the spirit, we're going to reap life ever everlasting. So we might, hey, look, we might both end up in a concentration camp. You know, you might see, you might, hey, the Lord might have it to where you end up in a concentration camp. And somebody that was making mockery of you might be in the same concentration camp as you. And you looking at them. And he's probably making fun of you like, oh, ah, I thought you said God was going to deliver you, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe that same night, the Lord sends angels to deliver you. And his ass is stuck over there. Or maybe they're about to execute both of you and then the Lord gives you spiritual power and his ass is stuck over there. See, our condition or our story is going to be different than yours. We may be in the same uh, predicament or we may be in what looks to be the same predicament. All right. But if the Lord has us end up in one of these concentration camps, pursuant to Revelation 2 and 10, all right, it's going to be for a purpose. Even if it is for us to die, it's going to be our death will be a different death than the death of a two-third. Our death will be for, uh, 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 you know, an honorable death, all right, in keeping the faith to fulfill prophecy. All right. The rest of these people are going to be dying in vain. As it tells you in the book of Second Ezra, that the multitude perish, all right, which was born in vain. So now let's finish it off here. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 30. It says, Also, thou son of man, thy the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls, 
and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. So, just because you listen, doesn't make you of the elect. You need to act, all right? In whatever lot the Lord has put you in, you need to act upon your faith because faith without works is dead. But there's different kinds of works to prove your faith, all right? For with their mouth, they show much love. Peace, peace, yo, yo, yeah, oh, that's, do I believe that? Oh, this, that, and the third. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. At the end of the day, the, what the script, uh, there's a saying that says the, what the mind uh, says the body follows. So at the end of the day, their mind is going to say, yeah, yeah, yo, peace, love. I mean, their mouth is going to say, peace, love, I believe that. But their mind is going to say, but right now I'm trying to, I'm trying to go do what I want to do. And they're going to do that. And they're going to get judged for it. Verse 32, and lo, <clears throat> thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not because they like, it, it sounds good. You know, you may cut up somebody or you may do a certain lesson on maybe getting on a specific topic and it sounds good. It's nice to hear. You know, I love hearing that. I love imagining that. But acting upon it, when it comes to the hard part, when it comes to actually putting your hand to the plow, they don't want to do it. All right. Repent. Oh, yeah, yeah. People definitely should repent. But why don't you repent? Yeah, no, I mean, not right now. It's not for me right now, you know. Verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. And what is that? What is that this that's going to come to pass? It's the martial law. It's the concentration camps. Is the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. Is the third world war with the nuclear missiles. It's the famines. It's the pestilence. It's the cannibalism. It's the disease. It's, it's, all, it's all of that. And it's going to happen one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. And each one is going to cause the next. And when that happens, and the Lord is assuring you here, he said, Lord, it will come. So be sure of it. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. That's when you're going to know that, oh, man, these guys, were, they were actually prophets. They were actually telling us the future. They were prophesying. They were telling us the truth. But it's going to be too late. All right? It's going to be too late. So, hey, for those who have eyes to see, man, you should by now, it should be clear as day what's actually going on. It should be clear as day what's going on. All right? They're, now, we're not even uh, having to tell you these things are going to happen. They're showing you. Hey, look, this is what we're planning to do. And all we're doing is showing you what they're showing you and confirming to you that we've been telling you this from the beginning, from our elders and apostles on down. So whether you take heed or not, hey, that's up to you, you know, or that's on you. We did our job and we're going to continue to do our job until the Lord tells us otherwise. All right. So with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash. Until next time, shalom.